Welcome to church this Sunday morning here at Trinity Lutheran in downtown Zanesville, Ohio. My name's Pastor Andrew Wilson. I'm privileged and blessed to be the pastor here, and I'm so glad and thankful to be with you this morning. I'm glad that you can join us as well for this time together to hear God's Word, to reflect on His gifts to us, and to seek to grow together in our faith. As you are watching this premiere on Sunday morning, we are also having in-person worship services at the same time at our sanctuary downtown in Zanesville. Of course, as you know, we're having four services each Sunday morning, and we're doing that so that we can keep the capacity of each one to 50 or less. Because that's the case, we're asking people to sign up in advance before they come to one of the services. The times are 7.15, 8.30, 9.45, and 11. If you uh, feel comfortable and when you feel comfortable to return to worship in person, we will be thankful to see you. But until that time, we're glad that you're able to join us here for our services online. As we look forward to our fall season at church, we often uh, prepare to start new Bible studies. Now, it still may be not tenable to be able to meet together in person for studies, but that shouldn't keep us from utilizing technology to be able to gather around God's Word. And so if you would be interested in joining a Bible study, maybe online in some format or way this fall, please let me know. Reach out and let me know, and we'll uh, share with you our plans for that when we get a little bit closer to fall. Also, this Sunday morning at Trinity, we are receiving communion uh, together. Of course, that's such a precious gift. And I understand and realize that some of you haven't been able to receive communion for a long time from our congregation because of the virus and because of not uh, wanting to leave your home. And I understand that. And yet, if there's any way that uh, myself or one of Trinity's elders can bring you communion so that you can share in that wonderful gift that God gives to us, Again, please reach out and let us know here at church. With that, let's speak together our verse of the month. And we have a new month, and so that means a new verse to say together as well. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. And so with that, let's begin with a moment of opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you as always for these opportunities where we can gather together either in person or online to hear your word and to rejoice at the love you have for us in Jesus. Lord, today as we talk about the things that we hunger for in life, we pray that you would Forgive us of all the many things that we hunger for that aren't good for us, but are actually detrimental to us or to our faith. And we pray, Lord, through the power of, of the Holy Spirit, that you would lead us to hunger after that which truly does satisfy, the righteousness that comes to us through Jesus, your Son and our Savior. Bless us as we focus anew on that this morning. As we pray this together in Jesus' name, amen. And so let's make our beginning then in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We take a moment of silent and personal confession of our sin at this time. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them 
and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear now these good words of God's grace for you. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear together God's word for us today, first from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading this morning comes to us from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 9. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises." To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard about the death of John, he withdrew from there in a boat, to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of, of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. At this time we join together in singing our sermon hymn for this Sunday, Seek Ye First. 
As always, the words will be on the screen, and we encourage you to join together at home or wherever you are and sing our hymn for this day. May God bless our meditation today on his word for us from our Old Testament reading that we heard in Isaiah chapter 55. Here's a question for you this morning. Are you hungry? Well, if not, maybe these advertising pictures of food might just do the trick. Let's give it a try. Oh, this one I love. I love pancakes, especially as a vehicle for syrup. And doesn't that syrup look good? You hungry? Well, I have some bad news for you. That picture is not actually of syrup. It's actually motor oil. It's a trick of advertisers to try and get you to see that the food looks better than it really is. Oh, even though I love pancakes a lot, I don't know if I really want to try those. Let's try something else. Let's go lighter. Let's go with cereal. Here's cereal. You can't go wrong with that, can you? That looks great. You got some cereal and some milk and, oh, that's wonderful. That's, doesn't that make you hungry? Yeah, you guessed it. It's not milk. To get it to look like that, advertisers actually use, yeah, glue or shampoo. And all of a sudden, that cereal doesn't seem very appetizing to me either. You know, let's forget breakfast. Let's move on to later in the day. Let's do something we can't go wrong with. Let's go to lunch. Let's go to this, a hamburger. Oh, that looks great and juicy and delicious. Now that looks good. I'm getting hungry. Now I know what you might be thinking at this point. Pastor, you're going to tell me that that hamburger is one of those impossible burgers, right? That's not beef. That's made out of vegetables. Well, actually, no. You're on. That is beef. That's a hamburger. It's just a hamburger that's been covered over with brown shoe polish to bring out the color. Oh, all right, let's, let's give it one more try. Let's go with something that, that you can't mess up, that you can't go wrong. Let's go with some fruit. How about these apples? Oh, those look great. Those look crisp and fresh, and it looks like they've just been washed. You can even see those droplets of water on there. This has to be good, except those aren't droplets of water. To bring out that, often advertisers use hairspray or spray deodorant. Oh. Sorry to say, brothers and sisters, but... Here's the truth. These pictures may have made us hungry for a moment, but if we were to eat those things as they really are, we would not be satisfied. In fact, you'd probably be sick. And then our hunger would probably be the least of our worries. Now, what you just saw was just an example of 
how we hunger after things that sometimes don't truly satisfy. But it's just a small example of truly a much bigger problem. In fact, I'd say that in our world today, we have a hunger problem. Now, of course, in many parts of the world, and even in our country too, people sometimes go without many necessities of life. Sometimes they go to bed hungry. You know, that's a problem, and it's one that we should care about as Christians. But that's not specifically what I'm talking about today. Because for most of us, we have a different kind of hunger problem. And I'm not even talking about food. Here's what I mean. Often, we hunger and we seek after our sinful desires. Our stomachs may not always be growling at us, but all too often our sinful nature does. And it leads us to hunger for things that aren't good for us. It leads us to hunger for money that isn't ours. Or to lust after someone who isn't our husband or wife. Or it leads us to pride as we compare ourselves to others. And sadly, the list could go on and on and on. And our sinful world certainly does play off these hunger pains that we have. Because we hear voices all around us in our world that seek to make us hungry for the things of it. Commercials on TV, billboards as we drive down the road, magazine covers and ads that lead us to believe that if we only had that, well, we'd be doing great. We hear these voices, we see these images, and far too often then we chase after these things like we are starving. But make note, this sermon today, it's not about the evils of advertising. It's about our hunger problem that leads us to run after things that we think will satisfy our cravings only to find ourselves disappointed and unsatisfied and just as hungry as we were when we began. In fact, the more we feed our hunger for the things of the world, the hungrier we get. And that's not normal. Rather, it shows us that our hunger for the sinful things of this world is more than just a hunger. It's an addiction, one that leaves us constantly searching after our next fix. And so part of our hunger problem, then, is an appetite for the sinful things of this world that never truly satisfies us. Kind of like a kid who fills up on candy and cola. Uh, Oh, he will eventually be full, but... He won't be satisfied. Instead, he will be sick. He'll have a nasty stomach ache to boot. But that's one piece of this hunger problem. There's another, too. On the other side of the spectrum, there are people who who seem to have no appetite at all for the things of God. They're apathetic about God's word or his work. When it comes to God, they have a lethargic appetite. And this is truly just as bad as hungering after the ways of the sinful nature. Think about it. If you go to your doctor and you tell them that you have no appetite and you are not eating anything, well, I bet your doctor would be just as worried about you as the person in the next room who has an appetite that will never be filled. You know, these people view going to church, these people with a lethargic appetite for God's word and work, they view going to church as a thing to do if, if they don't have anything else planned. Or as a thing that maybe they feel burdened that they have to do, but they really don't want to. Or they see serving at church as something they do only when they feel like it. And for them, reading God's word themselves, praying daily is something that is rarely remembered at all. These people have little hunger for the food that God offers them. So what do we have then? We have two kinds of people in the world today at opposite ends of the spectrum. And both of them have a hunger problem. And hear this, brother and sister in Christ. Sadly, I can say with confidence that you have been both kinds of those people at times yourself. And I say that with confidence because I know that I have been too. 
as a people who listen then to so many voices around us and who hunger for the raw and faint, and then as a people who are often so apathetic about hungering for the right things. Well, it's in this setting then that we hear another voice this morning call our attention and call us to attention. And yet this voice that appeals to our hungers, it's very different from the voices of our world, isn't it? It's a voice we heard from God through the prophet Isaiah earlier in our Old Testament reading. Listen to these words. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Another voice calling out to us, promising to satisfy our hunger. But this one, well, this one sounds different, doesn't it? This one that we are hearing is different than those we hear in advertisements. Because the advertisements are always seeking to disconnect us from our money. But rather, this voice says, he who has no money, come, buy, and eat. But the Lord offers you see, he doesn't come with a price tag. It's freely given. There's no catch. So in light of this kind of free and rich food, then, Isaiah, we read there a simple question that comes next. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Why do we hunger after the things that not only leave us unsatisfied, but leave us sick with pride or with arrogance or with lust? Has our pursuit of those things that we hunger after ever brought us lasting satisfaction? And then we hear a word to our apathetic appetites. Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me here that your soul may live. God offers us good food, rich food, the rich food of his word and his gifts to his people. And when we hunger instead after the things of this world, or when we're apathetic about God's gifts, it's almost like we're turning up our nose at a five-course feast in favor of leftovers that we found in a dumpster. It's like turning down 100% homemade maple syrup to eat motor oil on our pancakes. And yet God comes to us, yet time and time again, comes to sinners like you and me, and he offers us the very best, free of charge. And he does that because someone else has already paid our charge in our place. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid the charge of our sin. He paid for our sinful hungers and our apathetic ones. Through his death, you are forgiven of all of the times that you have hungered after the wrong thing, or the times that you disregarded the good food of God altogether. Because of Jesus, God again offers us his good gifts, his rich food, the very best, and still free of charge. And unlike the things of this world, this rich food that God provides his people, it doesn't disappoint. The undeserved grace of the gospel doesn't leave anyone's soul hungry. The forgiveness that Christ won for his people on the cross, it doesn't fail in doing its job. The body and blood given and shed for you doesn't come up short. God is always there to feed us, his word never fails. His forgiveness is always close at hand. And this day at church, in person, his meal is prepared again and freely given to us for the forgiveness of our sins. Brothers and sisters in Christ, do you want to satisfy your hunger? Then receive this meal. Do you want to satisfy your thirst? receive this meal and don't settle for less through the holy spirit at work in our lives as christians we do hunger after god's good gifts and we do receive his gifts to us 
You know, when you think about it the, and think about the world around us, it's not normal today to hunger after God and his gifts. It's not normal to go to church each week. It's not normal to resist the sinful hungers you feel because you want to obey God. It's not normal to pray before meals, to pray at all, to have your daily life and choices influenced by God's words of so long ago. In today's day and age, none of that seems normal. But for a Christian, that's what we do. And since by our own sinful nature we would not hunger at all for those things, that's how we know that the Holy Spirit is at work in us. The Holy Spirit working in us to bring us to God's house this morning, or to lead us to take the time to sit down at home and to turn on this service, to seek Him in prayer, to joyfully serve Him, to come together and humbly confess our need for forgiveness and our hunger for the righteousness of Christ. As Jesus said in his Beatitudes in Matthew 5, 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. And God does just that for us. He provides us with a meal that doesn't let us down, that doesn't leave us empty or sick, or hungry. A meal that isn't just as good as advertised, but better. A meal that fills us, and heals us, and satisfies our greatest needs, the forgiveness of our sins, both now and for all time. And so we hear that voice once more this morning. God saying to us, Come, listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live. Thanks be to God for that he forgives us of our sinful hungers. Thanks be to God for the Holy Spirit, through whom our appetites are set aright and led to hunger and thirst for the righteousness of Christ. In Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Having heard God's word proclaimed today, let us confess our common faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you have bidden us to come without money to receive grace beyond price. Hear us as we heed your call and turn to you in prayer, confident of your promise to hear and answer us. Father, we have sought meaning, comfort, and sustenance from all the wrong places. Grant us your Holy Spirit that our hearts may be turned to your word that we may hunger for your Son's body and blood, and that we may discern truth from error. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we give you thanks that you have blessed us beyond what we deserve and given to us your church. Guard her life by your Spirit and strengthen her witness before the nations. Bless all pastors and church workers in their service to us in your name. And bless those now considering and those preparing for church work vocations. Especially we pray for Trinity's former vicar now, Eli Shaw, and his family as they continue Eli's pastoral formation in Fort Wayne. We also pray for those churches that we walk together with in our church body. And today by name we pray for Chapel of the Cross Lutheran Church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, for their staff for their members, and for all the good work that they do 
that they would be built up to hunger and thirst for the righteousness of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we too quickly focus on what we lack and not upon your unlimited grace. Bless all relief agencies and services of your church that work on behalf of the hungry, the homeless, the hurting, and those who have lost hope. Bless those who have been visited by disaster and tragedy, especially all those who have been affected through the worldwide pandemic that we are living through now. Open our hearts to help them recover from their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we are daily blessed to know abundance and freedom. Bless those who defend us from our enemies who serve us in government and who protect us in our communities. Be with our president, the Congress, our governor, and our judges and magistrates, that they may discern the right path and lead us with honor and integrity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we suffer with all manner of ills and afflictions. Hear us and grant to us healing according to your will. We especially pray this day for those from our congregation and those in our community who are in need. For Pippi, John, Gary, Anne, Gary, Bill, Jim, Myra, Marianne, Freya, Amanda, Patricia, Richard, Melanie, Jacob, Emily, Myla, Lynn, Libby, Delbert, Payne, Wesley, Dorothy, Don and Shirley, Tom, Sharon, Sheila, and all others who are in need. Lord, we pray that you would grant to these people your healing according to your will. We also pray for those who mourn at this time. We pray for the family of Christine following her death. We also pray for the family of Nancy Toth following her death last week. For those who mourn, Lord, we pray that you would remind them of the promise of the resurrection from the dead, which is ours in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray this day for those who celebrate. We thank you, Lord, for blessing Larry and Diana Smith with 63 years of marriage. And just as you have blessed them so greatly in the years gone by, we pray for your continued blessings upon them in the years to come. We also thank you for the gift of new life through baptism that you bestow this weekend upon Nora Lynn Pauline. Thank you for blessing her parents, Aaron and Olivia, with her. We pray, Lord, that as Nora grows, she would know more and more of the love that you have for her in Jesus. For those who celebrate, we pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we remember the saints who lived by your mercy and who died in Christ. We long for the day when all divisions will end and the church in heaven and on earth shall be one in your presence, singing your praise in your kingdom without end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we ask you to grant us all things needful and to keep from us all things harmful to us and to our salvation. For we trust your wisdom and your love. And so teach us to pray the prayer that you have instructed us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing upon you this day. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen.